What's going on guys? Welcome back to Peak Performance. I'm Brandon and today we are at the North American International Auto Show in downtown Detroit. Check out this huge duck right behind me. If you're a Jeep fan, you get ducked right now here in Detroit. So let's go into the auto show. There's a few cars. I don't have a lot of time today, but a few things I want to see. Uh, mainly going to be the new S650 Mustang and also there's a, a purple rain Jeep Wrangler that I like to see in person and I think one or two other ones, but that's going to be it. I got to get back home. And so let's get in there and check these things out. All right, guys, so just walking into the auto show and perfect. We are right at the Ford booth to go see the Mustang, which is what I'm mainly here to see. I watched the uh, reveal last night at eight o'clock and my first impressions are I dig it. It's not much different than the S550 but I saw a lot of Camaro cues, which is not a bad thing, the current generation Camaro. I like it a lot, and I think I see, it might be a current car, but let's make our way over there and check it out. Holy shit, you guys, check this out. So this is the new 2023 Raptor R, and this baby is pumping out 700 horsepower. 640 pound feet, pretty badass. And then we come over here to this awesome Mustang. Check this thing out. Love the color on this thing. All right, so it looks like we just missed a little blurb. You know, in person, you guys, honestly, it's not much of a departure from the current S550. I don't hate the headlights as much in person as I thought. Otherwise, it's, I would say it's definitely unmistakably a Mustang. Like, as I first walked up, I don't get as much Camaro vibes as I did. And this is just kind of a base model. You know, once you get some hood scoops and some sexy stuff, some splitters up front, it'll look even cooler. But, uh, yeah, I'm actually digging it. Definitely... I'm liking the headlights more in person for sure than uh, in a picture. And the side profile is beautiful. It actually looks cleaner, um, kind of more elegant than the current generation S550, I, I think. I mean, it's not a whole lot different, right? But I'm digging it. Another discussion point that you guys have been posting online last uh, since last night is these controversial taillights. But I gotta tell you what, that shit looks badass. I mean, it's really cool. It almost makes the back of the uh, uh, the back of the trunk here look like a spoiler, even though there's not an actual spoiler. Um, so I think that's a really, really, really cool design feature. I mean, it's way cooler than just a flat ass. No one likes a flat ass. Now you got a little bit of a nice bump, looking spoiler. You know, Ford's gonna have a whole bunch of other spoilers to go on top of this thing. Spoilers on spoilers on spoilers. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, I'm digging it. I bet you all lit up, probably looks so awesome. The headlights probably look a lot cooler once the actual LED lights are turned on as well. Otherwise, not a whole lot of difference. Like, looking from the car here back, just from here to here, it's basically current generation, and then boom, you just got a cooler rear end, and you got a little bit different front end. I mean, I like it. So honestly, we're back to the current gen S550, and if you look at this Cobra, I mean, this is just you know, pretty flat. I mean, it still looks cool, but compared to that car, I think that's kind of cooler. And like I said, the body on the new one just looks a little bit smoother. It doesn't have these cool um, accent lines. So it just gives it a more kind of flowing, more beautiful design. Not that there's anything wrong with this, right? I freaking love this car. But this one just looks a lot smoother. So anyway, that's my thoughts on that. I'd still give my left kidney or left testicle to have this car, but. All right, guys, here's what we actually wanted to see. Here's the Mustang Dark Horse. So again, look at these crazy ass taillights. They do got the wing on the wing on the wing, which, I mean, it looks, it's awesome, okay? This car is not understated at all, right? It's, it's kind of ridiculous, but ridiculous in an awesome way. So with the badass wheels, the wing, I mean, I think they're gonna sell a ton of these things. Every young kid's gonna want one. Every middle-aged dude with a crisis is gonna buy one. Um, so it's pretty awesome. Let's go around to the front though. This one, I don't know if it comes through, but it's got a really cool paint job. You can see a lot of uh, a lot of flake in there, some pearl. Kind of changes colors as you go, so I really dig it. But 
The front end on this thing actually looks pretty sick. Still very much like a, the current generation Mustang. Um, and I do like it with the lights on for sure. So I'm definitely digging the headlights a lot more in person for sure than in pictures. So I think uh, you guys will like it too. It's pretty cool with these little uh, fender flares that they've got on the side as well. And then what they did on the hood for the flat black, uh, that's a really cool touch also. I like that. All right, so one more view of this Mustang. If you look at how these uh, taillights are convex or whatever the hell it is, you can see that that design language also hits with the uh, Mach-E. So you can see Ford's clearly trying to keep kind of a similar deal going, right, with this kind of insert. Now on the Mach-E, it's also got the additional extrusion, but it's sort of similar. So I can see where Ford's trying to keep that all, all kind of uh, going across the model line. Man, and if you guys know how I roll, I love red Mustangs, specifically Mustang convertibles, just like I have my 94 Mustang GT right now. Um, so if I was gonna order something, this could possibly be what I would like to order. The wheels on this one are really cool. That's a very unique, very different wheel. So uh, liking that a lot. And again, I am digging the freaking rear end. I mean, I don't like boring, plain stuff, right? So this is a pretty radical departure. No other car has kind of a cool rear end like that. So I'm really digging it. I still like that they also kept with the, uh, you know, kind of tri-bar, triple pony design action. It probably all blinks as uh, you turn on the blinkers. So I'm really liking that as well. Beautiful candy apple red paint on this one. And the interior, which for me in the current generation car of the Mustang, I haven't liked it too much. This I'm actually digging. So with the whole driver centric display, that looks pretty badass. And I'm digging now the bottom of the wheels flat. That's really cool. So I'm really liking this one, especially with the red accents on this particular combo. Looks pretty sweet. Let's check out how the front end looks. Pretty nice, guys. Loving it. Y'all check this out. I'm in this uh, badass green GT500 Cobra. Shelby Cobra. Dang, that thing is. Woo! That's nice. These seats that are in here too, boy. Dang. You know, having had a few Hellcats this year, uh, Challenger Hellcats, I definitely like the visibility. I, I like the seating position uh, in this car versus like the Challenger. It it's definitely a little bit smaller, but the seats are great. The visibility is, is, I like how this is kind of a more upright windshield, I feel like, so big fan, big fan of the Mustang. Not a big fan of the freaking interior though. This, this whole uh, display Ford uses, the gauges in this car suck. Not a fan of it. But I think they're gonna fix that, it looks like, in the next generation uh, with that nice whole big screen they got on there. Now, if you guys haven't been to the Detroit Auto Show, one of the cool things is if you work in the industry and you come for industry day or uh, the actual press day, you get to sit in a lot of cars that you probably can't sit in, like you just saw me a minute ago uh, in that GT500. And then here they've got a Mach 1 that's like not even, doesn't even have its for, uh, for sale price, so I'm not sure if this is actually gonna be available to the public or not, but I'm sure this will be locked up during the actual consumer event, but I can go ahead and sit in here right now. So this is pretty cool if uh, you're in the industry, if you're in Detroit, uh, it's 75 bucks to get in, but it's worthwhile because you do get access to a lot of cars that you wouldn't normally. And also like during consumer days, for example, this car might be ringed off where you can't even touch it. So uh, they don't do that on the industry days. So a dude from Ford is actually behind me doing an interview for a local uh, radio station. And uh, he is saying that the new Dark Horse model will replace the Mach 1, and uh, they are targeting for that 5-liter Coyote V8 to make 500 horsepower naturally aspirated. And he was quick to point out that the Gen 5 GT500 made only 500 horsepower supercharged, where this thing's going to make it naturally aspirated. So uh, obviously things are you know going up. I mean, heck, we think back, guys, to 1994, 28 years ago, my Mustang GT, for example, 5-liter V8 naturally aspirated 215 horsepower which it's just it was sad back then it's, it's still even more sad now all right so while we're right over here I'm gonna have a look at this uh, Silverado RST so I'm a big fan of this thing I'm a big fan of the Hummer the Hummer's badass it's just super freaking expensive and this shares the same platform as the Hummer front end looks awesome loving it so I'm a really big fan of this especially in this blue color 660 horsepower maximum 400 mile range so this thing's pretty badass. All right, so we're making our way over to GM. Here is GM's new electric Blazer. So Blazer is one of GM's best-selling vehicles. So they're making a big bet that people will want to buy this. I think it's a really, really, really nice looking vehicle. I mean, look at this thing. It looks badass, looks cool. You know, if you're a soccer mom, you need something to haul the kids around, the family around, this is really cool. So I think that this will sell pretty well. 
Let's see uh, maybe how much this baby costs. Uh, we don't know, but up to 300 mile, 320 mile range. I mean, on the SS model, under four seconds, so that's badass. Oh, 45k. So, all right, starting at 45k, probably going to be 60k though, plus maybe with uh, you know full options, full horsepower, 60, 70 thousand is my guess. But pretty nice looking red interior on this one too, which is really cool. All right, for all my GM fans, here is the first look at a Z06 in person, at least for me. And, uh, you know, it's badass. Been seeing it a lot on YouTube for the last year and teased by pictures and videos. I've even seen a whole bunch from where I live. I live right by the GM Proving Ground, so I see a lot of these guys driving around. But uh, the carbon fiber wheels look absolutely sick. So, big fan of that. Man, they really make these things just shine and pop under the lights, huh? All right, so our friends at Lincoln have a few wild ass concepts that they got. Look at these doors. Forget Lambo doors. What would you call those? The broom doors. I don't know. You probably can't tell on camera, but this car is enormous. Super wide, super low, super long. And then they got this other cool concept here. Really, really wild looking, cool wheels, flat paint. LED lights everywhere. So obviously electric and you have a skateboard platform so the interior could be reconfigurable, all that cool stuff. But uh, pretty cool. Look, even uh, even the A-pillar here is clear. This is a sneak peek of the new Cadillac Lyric too. So what they've done with these lights and this kind of whole grill, that's, that's kind of cool. Kind of gives the illusion that it actually has a grill, like either the chrome or like shiny bits, but it's just basically a flat piece with lights. So that's kind of cool. But, I mean, it looks a lot like uh, like other Cadillacs, uh, whole brand, you know, it's not radical, nothing crazy, but that's probably what people want, right? They want to have something that looks nice, looks cool, is electric, but, you know, maybe doesn't draw a ton of attention. And then this over here, I think it's the CT6 Blackwing, I think, because that's the LT4 right there, 668 horsepower. And what else we got? Oh, Escalade V, boy. Damn, we just got the LT4. Let's go check this out. Yep, 682 horsepower. That's what you need. You need an LT4 powered Escalade. Because why not? Pretty cool concept. I've never seen uh, kind of this provision where the top of the door can go up to help with headroom while you're getting out. That's pretty uh, pretty unique. Very nice rear end. I like that. Cool. Who knew Buick was even still around? It's a pretty big trunk. You got the big old truck bed too. Lots of room back there. This baby's got 35s. All right guys, so I'm sitting in the current model Camaro SS. And uh, you know, the one thing that Challenger and Mustang really have over the Camaro is the visibility. The windshield is just, it looks like it's just this freaking big. And it's really, really raked back. So I would say out of those three pony cars, this definitely has the worst, um, the worst visibility outwards. It's just, it feels really cramped. Seats feel good. I mean, steering wheel's nice. Shifter's pretty awesome. You know, it's, all that stuff's good. I still don't like the interior, the gauges, all that packaging. It's not great, but um, yeah. Definitely I like the Mustang the most. You know, especially after having owned a few uh, Challengers. I mean, Challenger's comfy, it's a good, Definitely a good car, but I like the Mustang a little bit more. It feels a little bit more sporty, feels a little bit smaller. Um, this thing feels like the hood just goes out forever because you kind of can't really see it too much. But uh, definitely a small windshield on this. All right, so they've got a 70th anniversary Corvette right here, and I have not sat in the latest generation Corvette, so I don't even know how to get into it. Okay, you push that. Let's check this thing out. All 
All right, now this thing's got a super raked windshield. I mean, super raked down, um, but visibility's good. Uh, way more headroom. Well, I shouldn't say there's way more headroom than the Camaro because that Camaro I was just in had a, a sunroof, but this has got, you know, plenty of room. It's definitely comfy. You know, I'm almost six foot, 210 pounds, and plenty of room in here, so this thing's cool. Nice metallic paint on this one. <laughs> so much Alcantara, like Alcantara headliner, Alcantara just everywhere in that thing. No one will talk shit that this version of Corvette has a crappy interior. I mean, that is the, one of the nicest car interiors I've ever been in that's not a Porsche or Ferrari or something like that. I mean, for a domestic OEM to be whatever this 70th anniversary costs, probably 100,000 bucks. I mean, that is awfully nice. Way nicer than a comparable, let's say, $100,000 Hellcat or Hellcat Red Eye, right? I mean, that's really, really nice. Now I don't have time to wait in line, but uh, this is the part of the Ford booth, the Ford exhibit. They're actually letting you take some rides around. So look at this, they got Broncos and stuff that you could actually take over this thing. And I don't know if the camera picks it up, but that is 30 feet high. So that would actually be, <laughs> look at how small this thing looks compared to uh, this big ass ramp. So that would actually be a pretty cool departure to go up to. Probably pretty sketchy, pretty scary feeling. So that's really cool they're letting people do that. Now some of you guys might hate this, some of you are gonna love it. I personally love it. I think this is the future. For a lot of stuff, this is badass. Gives us more options as car guys and for more performance. Check out this electrified El Camino, baby. So this is done by Lincoln Felter, which is local here in Detroit, those guys. And they'll probably give us some specs. Oh, it's really small. So it's backed by 4L60. I'm sure it's got 600 plus horsepower, but look at how cool that is. Roll up to your local car show with that, people won't even know what to think. All right, so it looks like we got Ram doing the same thing, giving people some ride-alongs and uh, getting a chance to kind of experience the trucks actually moving. So I think that's really cool versus all the other auto shows I've been to. And I've been to dozens and dozens of car shows. I've been coming here since I was like five years old and I've almost not missed any. So uh, I think it's really cool that they're actually doing that, giving people a, a, a chance to experience the actual vehicles. Probably will help more than more with selling than uh, just actually seeing them and sitting inside them. Dodge Charger SRT Daytona concept. If you guys don't know, this is probably the most talked about car right now ever since it got announced, I think last week or the week before. Um, but Dodge, AKA Stellantis, is thinking about getting rid of the Hemi uh, motors found in the, uh, the supercharged Hemis found in the Hellcats and maybe going all electric. Um, we'll see what happens, but uh, you know, they got the fake exhaust noise. You can check that all out, but uh, in person, the design's cool, the car looks really nice. Again, it's a concept though, so I think once we get to production, we probably wouldn't see some of these things, which to me look more like the concept car, the thin glass, the thin pillar surrounds, the wheels might change and stuff, but the rear end's cool. This whole big swooping area of the body, this big wide rear haunch, I think looks really cool. I'm sure that'll stick. I think the logo's badass too, and the interior looks sick, so hopefully they can do that. Because no and Dodge, whatever they do, it's going to uh, stay the same for the next 15 years just like the current platform goes back to 2008 or whatever, right? So, uh, but yeah, it looks really good. The front end thing is really cool too. With that whole kind of front wing deal. I mean, that's really wild. Kind of cool. All right, and the final thing I came to see, the new purple rain color for Jeep Wranglers and it looks a lot different in person for the better. To me, this looks a lot, like right now, there's not a lot of crazy sunlight, so it's a pretty dark purple. And uh, dude, this is badass. Online, it looked like it might be a lot lighter, but this looks dope. So we might be trading in the hell yellow, going with purple rain, so we'll see. I really dig it too on this particular uh, Rubicon with the red interior accents, that's pretty cool. We would probably be getting another 4xe though, so then this would be just the regular uh, gray color. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how wifey likes it, see if she wants to get one. 
Uh, so that's hard to tell without sunlight, but there is some uh, metallic flake in there. And I'm sure it's got some pearlescence so that it flip flops a little bit, but uh, I do dig it. Digging it. And we got Jeep over here doing the same thing, giving some rides. They've got also a very large uh, little ramp to go up on, which is really cool. You gotta love this color. Forget the name of it offhand, but it's pretty cool, pretty wild. If you get a Jeep Wrangler, you gotta get some cool ass color. Don't get black, don't get uh, the freaking primer looking color, okay? You gotta get something fun. All right, guys, so that's my experience at 2022 North American International Auto Show. Again, that's just kind of some of the highlights. There's a few more things to see. There's a whole electrification area with some wireless charging and a few other kind of cool things. There's stuff like this where you can see some uh, kind of cool sports cars and local high-end autos for sale. There's some Ferraris and stuff over there to check out. But for me, I just wanted to see those three or four cars, so I just wanted to take you guys along with me. So again, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff that helps the channel. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.